and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. We're going to keep working with itemized deduction, and specifically, we're going to be looking at interest. This topic is covered in an income tax course, CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind my viewers that's you to connect with me on a personal as well as a professional level. You can connect with me on my LinkedIn account or my Facebook. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel where you have all access to all my lectures. Please like those lectures, share them with others, put them in playlists so other people might benefit. And this is my Twitter account. I do have a website where I organize all my courses via chapter so it's easier to navigate. This recording is brought to you by Yeager CPA Review. If you like this recording, you can view hundreds of hours of video lectures, as well as thousands of multiple choice questions with solution, simulations, textbook, audio lectures, electronic flashcards, plus others on Yeager CPA Review. Use code PMF. You'll get 10% off of the best valued course. You will benefit yourself and benefit. Let's start with the deduction for AGI, which is the interest on qualified student loan. And to be more specific, let me show you where it goes. This is form 1040. This is your income, all of your income. Then what you do, you come to adjusted gross income. And on an, under adjusted gross income, you're going to have a line where you can deduct your student loan interest. So you can deduct student loan interest before, before you get your AGI. So this is good. So this is good. Okay, so it's it's an adjustment for AGI. This this is not part of your itemized deduction. Okay, so it's deductible for AGI, subject to limits. So so the, why do you think that's the case? Well, of course the Congress don't you know they're generous to a point. And remember, most of us as um, as as students, when you just graduated from college, you're not going to have enough itemized deduction. So so that what Congress said, we're going to give you a deduction, although you're not going to itemize. However, your deduction is limited to 2,500 and you don't need to itemize because as if you're in your early 20s or mid 20s or even late 20s, you may not own a home, you may not have interest expense or real estate taxes, therefore you don't itemize. So here's a deduction for you that you can take for AGI. And deduction is phased out, okay? For taxpayer with modified AGI, just AGI between 65 and 80. So if you're single, once you go from 65 to 80, 80 over 80, you're no longer qualified for this. If you're married, fine and jointly, 135 to 165, okay? Not allowed for those who are who are claimed as a dependent or married, fine and separately, you are not allowed to take this deduction. Okay, so how do you how do we compute the exclusion amount? Well, we'll take in education interest expense, multiply it by your modified adjusted gross income minus the phase out, divided by either fifteen if you are single or thirty thousand if you are married filing jointly. And this is how we find out if you don't qualify or we have to reduce your twenty five hundred, assuming you have twenty five hundred or more. So let's take a look at an example in twenty eighteen. Kurt and Rita, who are married and filed a joint return, paid three thousand of interest on a qualified student loan. First thing we know that the maximum they can have to deduct is twenty five hundred. Their MGI is one forty two. Hold on, their MGI is one forty two. Is above one thirty five, but below one sixty five. So we're going to be reducing this two thousand five hundred. Okay. Their maximum potential deduction for qualified loan education loan is twenty five hundred. That's their maximum, but it must be reduced by six twenty five. Let's see how we computed this. We'll take the maximum two thousand five hundred times their modified adjusted gross income one thirty two five hundred. Just consider it adjusted gross income. You don't have to worry about what's what's not included, what's included in it. Just adjusted gross income minus the phase out divided by $30,000 is the phase out range for married filing jointly, which will give us a reduction of 625. Therefore, they can deduct only 1875, which is the maximum 2500 minus the 625. So this, this deduction 1875. So let me show you where it goes. It goes right here. 18 75 for AGI. Now let's talk about qualified residence interest or interest on home mortgage to be more specific. There's some confusion about this topic. Hopefully we'll try to clarify it. Okay. First thing you want to know is we are back to schedule A, which is itemized deduction. We already covered medical expenses and taxes. Now we're going to be looking at interest you paid and specifically home mortgage interest. This is what we are discussing here. So those deductions are from 
AGI, not for AGI, from AGI. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What, what, when can you deduct the interest? If the interest is on the debt secured by the principal residence and one other residence. So if you own a home, okay, that's one home and you could have another home. So the interest on both of these homes, one is considered the primary and you have a second home. As long as the second home is not obviously a rental property, then you can deduct the interest on those two. Okay. Under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, from 2018 to 2025, qualified residents, qualified residents' interest only include interest on acquisition debt. So simply put, we used to have something called home equity loan. Okay, home equity loan is no longer deductible. Okay, so the only interest that, that you incur for the acquisition, acquisition is when you buy. What is home equity loan? Home equity loan is when you go to the bank and you get a second loan against the property to maybe take a vacation, um, buy a car, buy a boat. Those are not, the interest is not deductible anymore. Okay, so interest on home equity loan is no longer, is not deductible. Acquisition debt, which is the acquisition means what? It's the amount incurred to acquire, construct, or substantially improve the qualified residence. This is what we mean by acquisition debt. So any amount you incur to buy, build, or substantially improve, that's acquisition debt. And that debt, that interest on that debt, still deductible. Now, they reduced it a little bit, but it's still deductible. What, what they took away is the home equity loan. So the home equity loan is not deductible. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, here's what happened. If the debt is incurred on or before 12, 15, 2017, so as long as you bought the house, constructed the house, or substantially improved the house before this date, interest paid on the aggregate acquisition indebtedness of $1 million or less is deductible as qualified interest. Okay, so as long as the interest paid on an aggregate acquisition total of a million dollar, if you're married filing jointly and half a million for, for, married, for married filing separately, you can still deduct it. Now, if the debt is incurred after 12 15 2017, but before 1 1 2026, so from December 15 2017 till January 1st 2016, acquisition debt is limited to $750 for married, for married taxpayer and 375 for married filing separately. So notice it's still available to reduce the amount of purchase from a million to 750. That's all what it is. As long as you bought the house before 12, 12 15, 2017, the million dollar applies. Uh, interest paid on the aggregate acquisition of a million dollar, then after that date, it's 750. So they did not take it away. Okay. These higher debt limit will apply to all homeowners after 2025, regardless of the date of the borrowing. Then we'll go back after 2025. So notice it's still there. What they took away is the home equity loan. Okay. Home equity loan prior to 2018 and after 2025 uh, and after 20, qualified resident interests only include interest on home equity loan. So qualified interests also include um, home equity loan. So before, so here we go. So we have 2018, 2025. Anytime before we had home equity loan, interest deductible any time after, it's gonna go back. In this period, no more home equity loans. And to tell you a personal story, I paid off my home equity loan this year. I used to have a home equity loan. I paid it off because I used to be able to deduct the interest. I no longer can deduct the interest. Therefore, I paid it off in 2018 because it's, that's the last year I could use it. Okay, it's going to go back to 2026, but I don't have to worry about this now. Okay, uh, home equity loan are secured by a qualified residence. Okay. Interest is deductible only on a portion of the home equity loan does not exceed the lesser of $100,000 or the fair market value of the home minus the acquisition debt. Simply put, the maximum you can deduct on a home equity loan that's not available now is the uh, the loan cannot exceed $100,000 or the difference between the fair market value and the acquisition debt. Let's take a look at an example. Larry owns a personal residence with a fair market value of $450,000 and an outstanding first mortgage of 420. So let me show you how this works. Maybe you don't, if you don't own a home, you don't kind of, you, ha you don't have the, co the concept of it. Uh, so the home value is 450. You have a first mortgage for 420. What does that mean? It means you have equity of $30,000. Okay. 
what does that mean? It means you, you might be able to go to the bank and ask the bank for a loan for this much. They may or may not give you 30000 They may give you less. So Larry borrows $15,000 that's secured by a second mortgage on his home to buy a new family automobile. So, so this individual went to, went to the bank and asked the bank, can I borrow against this 30000 And the bank said, yes, we'll give you half of your equity. Okay? So let me show you what happened now. 450 minus 420 minus 15, the equity that's left is 15. Okay, but now he got a loan of 15,000. For years prior to 2018, all of Larry's interest is deductible because it's less than the fair value, the fair market value of the home is less than the debt, and it's less than 100,000. Larry may only deduct interest on his first mortgage now. Now, the only interest that's deductible is is the interest that's on the $420,000 mortgage. Interest on the home equity loan is not deductible from 2018 to 2025. So this is what they suspended. They suspended the interest on the home equity loan, not the interest on the loan, the first, the first mortgage itself. Hopefully we understand this. Interest paid for services. Now when you want to buy a home, when you want to buy a home, what's gonna happen is, they're gonna say, well, um, we're gonna be charging you something called points. They call them points. What really are, what points are is interest, but it's interest that you have to pay up front. So they would say, well, guess what? The interest rate is 6%, but if you pay $3,000, we reduce it to 4%. What's gonna happen is like you're buying, the $3,000 is points, okay? We'll reduce it by two points. Basically what you did is you pre prepaid the interest. So points, in quote points, paid for the use of money, basically use of money or forbearance of money. Use of money, the word use of money is interest, the simply interest. So points are technically interest. They cannot be considered a service charge if they are to qualify as deductible interest. So when they say we're charging you points, that we're charging you points to reduce your interest. So they cannot be considered service charge. If they're service charge, they're not deductible, okay? Points generally must be capitalized and amortized over the life of the loan. So basically what you should do, if you are paying, if you paid $3,000 over 30 years, you can take uh, $100 a year, okay? 100 times 30 is $3,000. You could you would amortize and over the loan, generally speaking. Exception do exist. Points paid in the acquisition or improvement of a principal residence. So if you are buying the home and you had to pay points, guess what? If I paid $3,000 points, you can deduct those points. The entire amount of such points are deductible. And I know when I bought my house, I paid I paid some points. Why? Because I wanted to, I wanted to lock my interest rate at a lower rate and I had to pay some points, that's fine, okay? Now points to refinance an existing home mortgage must be capitalized and amortized. Refinance is what? Uh, basically, again, let's go back to that example. You have a loan for 420000 Let me just... Uh, so let's assume you have a loan for 420000 and your payment happened to be 2500 That's your payment on that loan. Then suddenly, interest rate went down. What you did, what you go back to the bank and tell them, could you refinance my loan? Because you were paying 7%. And you will tell the bank, refinance it, and now I'm going to be getting 4% or 5%. What happened? Your payment goes down to 1800 Okay? Basically, this is what refinancing is. You Basically, you took this loan, you pay it off, and you get a new loan at a lower rate. That's what refinancing is. If you incur any point during this process, okay, those points must be capitalized and amortized. Must be capitalized and amortized. Okay? Let's take a look at an example. Uh, let me see, is there an example? Okay, I thought there was an example. Uh, but let's assume, um, you know, an a taxpayer purchased a residence many years ago, okay? And they were paying, uh, they were paying 8%. They were paying 8%. Now they can refinance the loan, okay? They refinance and they get 4% interest rate. So what they can do, they can cut their interest rate down by half. But in the process, they have to pay you know, 2,600 in points, okay? What's gonna happen? Because this is a refinance, the refinancing, the, the existing loan, they're gonna have to take this 2,600, and let's assume it's over 15 years, they will divide this by 15 years. And every year they can capitalize and amortize over the life of the mortgage, the amount of 26 divided by 15. 
investment interest and other uh, and other types of issues that we have to deal with here is investment interest on loans whose proceeds are used to purchase investments property may be deductible investment property could be considered bond stocks lend held for lend held lend held for investment simply put if i want to buy stocks um let's assume i have you know twenty thousand dollar in my account my broker the broker might say you have twenty thousand and i'm willing to give you twenty thousand dollar too to buy stocks and what happened is this when they give you this additional twenty thousand they're going to charge you interest this is investment interest so you're going to you're going to be paying interest on this twenty thousand dollars so basically they doubled your money to invest but they're going to charge you interest so how much can you deduct of that interest well you can deduct of the deduction of investment interest expense is limited to net investment income so you have to have investment income okay if you have interest income dividend income guess what you can deduct the amount of the interest expense you can zero it down so as long as you have income the interest expense would lower your income this is how you can deduct it and we'll see this in the next chapter a little bit more interest pay, interest expense payable to related parties as long as it's cash basis simply put you have to make the payment you can deduct interest expense incurred to purchase a tax exempt security remember i said you can buy bonds and investments if that bond or investment is tax exempt then it's you can take no deduction because the income from that bond is not the taxable therefore the expense to incur to buy this bond is not deductible and you cannot prepay interest so you cannot basically tell your bank i'm going to prepay one year or two years of interest so you can get a big deduction you cannot do so no prepayment of interest and if you do you can pay it if you want to but you cannot get a tax deduction you're only going to get get the tax deduction for the interest that is for that particular year and this is a summary of all the interest that we talked about generally speaking personal interest which is interest on card loan credit card loan those are generally not deductible remember we have two exception which is the student loan and the mortgage interest otherwise personal interest personal consumer interest are not deductible include any interest that's that's not qualified residence which is mortgage you remember mortgage is an exception and qualified student interest loan investment interest is investment business interest is business okay that's different examples include interest on card loans and credit card loans those are not deductible okay qualified student interest loan that's yes that's deductible for agi subject to limitation remember we can deduct the maximum 2500 qualified residence interest the acquisition debt yes deductible as an itemized deduction limited to the amount of debt of 750 or a million dollar if you bought the house prior to december 15 2017. qualified residence interest which is home equity debt that's not deductible and it won't be deductible from 2018 to 2025. it was deductible before 2018 it will be deductible after 2015. the amount of the loan must be a hundred thousand and the fair market value of the debt must be less than the amount of the debt investment interest not related to rental or real property investment interest is yes also as an itemized deduction limited to the investment income again we'll see this topic again in chapter 11. investment interest related to rental a rental or royalty property that's basically yes now what you're dealing with here is deduction for agi because this is a rental property again we'll see this in chapter 11. so notice interest it can come in many different format it can be personal interest and the only personal interest deduction is student loan and home equity loan student loan and home equity loan those are two personal if you have any questions any comments about this topic by all means email me if you are studying for your cpa exam as always study hard if you're studying for your college studies always study hard it's worth it. Good luck.